Isn't that cool? Well, uh, uh, if we had, uh, so we had 260 hot dogs that we cooked and sausages that we cooked and gave away. 260 gone, so we're guessing uh, at least around 300 people there. And uh, amazing thing, uh, there were 78 volunteers. 78 volunteers. If you, if you guys helped volunteer with that yesterday, would you stand up if you helped volunteer? <laughs> yeah, every, awesome. We give yourselves a hand. Awesome. Way to go. Man, it took the whole church to make that happen. You guys are amazing. Amazing. We had um, people get in prayer who uh, we heard from the prayer tent. They weren't even in church, weren't going to church, but they saw that prayer booth and said, man, we want prayer. They're going and getting that. And uh, the, the O'Sunny Day missions team raised so far over $2,000 to help get the youth over to Africa. <laughs> Woo! That's right. And, uh, and that sale's still going. It'll keep going today after service and Monday. So get the word out. Come shop if you want. There's tons of stuff still over there. So today and Monday, that sale's still going on. Um, and sh wasn't that fun? That was so much fun. I, I, it was incredible. And I just, I really want to thank you guys. Each one of you. I mean, the, the team leads did amazing. Um, yeah, that, people just owned stuff, ran with stuff, made it happen, made it big, made it beautiful. Would you, would you all give Cindy a hand? Yeah. Woo! So at our outreach meeting like two weeks ago, we said, we need someone to be the point person the day of where people can go if they have questions. And Cindy was like, I'll do that. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I heard from Cindy, <laughs> oh yeah, John said, Cindy will do that. And the next thing I knew, Cindy was like calling every person in the church saying, how are you going to help? What are you doing? Staying up all night long, painting posters with the family. And she drove all the way out to uh, Timbuktu. And, and got two, uh, two ton of hay and brought it in for the thing. So anyways, I just want to say thank you to Cindy for going above and beyond. And thank you to all of you. So many of you went above and beyond in this. I mean, you didn't just do what we asked you to. You made it amazing. You made it special. You made it beautiful. So thank you to each one of you guys. That was awesome. That was awesome. And we did exactly what God has called us to do. We love Jesus we lived Jesus, we showed Jesus, and we shared Jesus. And so that was pretty beautiful to see. Thank you. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day. And we thank you that even in the face of bad jokes, we have joy in the house of the Lord. That you are in us and you are with us, Lord. And we thank you for the strength the hope, the joy, the peace that we have in you. And right now, as we get ready to look at your word, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray you would speak exactly what you have us to hear, what you would have us to hear today. Lord, may, I know it has absolutely nothing to do with me, Father. I pray that it would simply be your spirit breathing life into your scripture, Lord, and that he would be instructing us and sharpening us through it. May we have hearts to hear. And understand in Jesus name amen amen well it's a good day today uh, the we're looking in the Psalms and so uh, Kiara that you quoted that psalm for us uh, at the beginning because we're going to be looking specifically at two Psalms today and if you pull out your Bible it's not going to be on the slides it's, it's going to be right here in your book Right here in the book. And it's Psalm 146. Psalm 146 is the first psalm we're going to be looking at today. Do you guys uh, ever feel like the world's a little chaotic? Yeah, some of you do. No? No, never? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, between, um, I mean, the division. Chaotic means chaotic. Crazy. Thank you. Chaotic means crazy. It means difficult. It means a little scary. That's what chaotic means. Chaotic means you don't know. Everything doesn't make sense anymore. 
Like when you try to look at everything and understand everything, it doesn't make sense. Like why is that happening? That's the idea of chaotic, chaos. And the world lately, for a long time, has felt pretty chaotic. The world has been chaotic ever since, well, the fall. But we felt it a little bit more acutely in the last couple years. Things don't seem to make sense. Things don't seem to add up. There's conspiracy theories swirling all around. There's people with division and hostility. Family members who love each other are suddenly divided and opposing each other. I don't know if you've seen that in your family. I've seen it in mine. That over the last year and a half, people who love each other are suddenly at odds with each other, fighting with each other, making fun of each other, um, and, and assuming the worst about each other. And when you look around at, the, at a national level, you see unrest, you see strife. Strife means people are getting ready to fight. And it makes you a little nervous. It makes you a little scared. And uh, I feel that. I've seen that a lot lately. And, uh, and a lot of us, a lot of people are wondering about their jobs. There's been mandates about uh, vaccines, and people have different opinions about that. And they have to decide whether they allow the, the government to decide what they put into their body or if they're going to keep their job. And that's a terrible decision to have to decide between. Um, and, and so there's just all this chaos right now, this craziness. And listen to this psalm. Let's just read it straight through, and then we'll go back over it. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge. That means a place where you can go and hide. He's our refuge, and he's our strength. A very present help in trouble. Um, very present there can also be a well-proved. He has proved himself to be a help when we're in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, at the swelling of the ocean. There is Selah. That means pause and think about that. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. This is talking about the holy city, Jerusalem, where the temple was, where God's people lived. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. They, he utters his voice. The earth melts. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Amen. And that's God is our refuge and strength. Our refuge and strength. Hey, Elijah, can you come on up here? Elijah, can you come on up here? All right, well, we didn't practice this ahead of time, so I'm curious to see what you're going to do, buddy. Now, you come right here. Come right here. Now, Daddy's going to st stand right there. We're going to pretend, okay, that... Um, you are, you are the Philistines, and I'm the Israelites, and I'm going to chase you, all right? What are you going to do? If I'm the Israelites, and you're the Philistines, and you're running away, and I'm going to chase you, what are you going to do? Here I come! Ha! What are you going to do? <laughs> That's good. That's good. But do you remember when David killed Goliath, and Goliath fell down? And all the Philistines were scared and ran away. Can you run away? Run, run, run. Run, run, run. I'm going to get you. Run, run, run. Run. <laughs> He's a fighter. He's a born fighter. All right. So, Elijah, if you're scared, I want you to go and hide back behind here. Get down. Get down on the ground. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, no, I can't get you. Ah, I can't get you. Ah, I can't get you. Oh, you're too far away. I can't get you. Ah, ah. So Elijah right now, he found refuge behind the piano. 
That's what refuge is. Yeah, did you see that candy? <laughs> Mama will help you open that. <laughs> refuge is a place where we go and hide when we're scared. Refuge is like, it can be a, a hiding place. It can also be a fortress, somewhere where it, it protects you. Maybe there's tall walls all around you. And so Elijah went and hid, and then this piano was a wall, and I couldn't get around him. I couldn't get to him. That was a refuge. And so this scripture says that God is our refuge and our strength. So what was Elijah's first reaction was, hey, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take you down, you Israelites. God is the strength inside of us that when life is crazy and when we're not sure what to do, God is the place where we run. God is the wall around us. God is our hiding place. And when we run to him, therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. See, when the world is chaotic, when the world is a mess, this psalm tells us the truth. In verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Now, this is a reference um, to prophecy. And this, this prophecy, you see it throughout Scripture. You see it in Revelation um, chapters like 21, and where the, this river of God comes out from the New Jerusalem. You see it in Ezekiel um, and there at, at uh, chapter 47, 48, where this river is coming out of Jerusalem. And the way that the river works is that there was an altar. Let's pretend this is an altar where they would uh, worship God, offer sacrifices, worship God. And out from the river, would, out from the altar would come this little trickle. And the Bible says in, in uh, Ezekiel that that little trickle will go to the south side and it will go out through the middle of the temple, through the gate, and it will go out through the land. And in Zechariah, it talks about this too. And in, and in the prophets, it says that river will actually split in two and go one half to the Dead Sea and one half to the Mediterranean Sea. And, and this river brings life everywhere it goes. The Dead Sea is extremely salty. Nothing can grow. Over in the playground, I have had the, a, a heck of a time with weeds growing in that playground. It drives me nuts. And I don't want to spray Roundup because all the kids play there. Uh, so I want to put chemicals. So what I've been doing, I've been sowing the playground with salt. I've been throwing salt down in the playground um, because salt kills everything. Nothing can grow where there's salt in the soil. And so I'm just trying to kill everything over in that playground. So if you're planning on having a little garden here at the church, don't use the playground because it won't grow. Um, so down at the Dead Sea, it is salty and nothing can grow. God says that when his river goes to that sea... It's going to bring life where it goes. Instead of being salty, it will be fresh and things will sprout up and fish will swim there again and trees will grow there again. And so this river brings life because it's coming from the temple. The river is a symbol of the presence of God because the temple was where people would go to worship God and meet with God. And now God's presence is flowing out and splitting and going throughout the whole land and it's bringing life, and it's bringing healing, and it's bringing wholeness everywhere it goes. And so, when, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, and though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That means the people of God. That means you and I. And that river is God's presence. When the world is in chaos, when we're frustrated, when we're scared, when things don't make sense, do you know where we're supposed to run? Into God, into his presence, into that river, into that river. And that river is coming right out from under the altar, which was the place of worship. You jump into worship. You start praising God and worshiping God, and things start to make sense again. Amen. Amen. And so when, when you're scared or when you're nervous or when you don't know what to do, start worshiping and get into God's presence. It, I mean, yes, there was a, I was just reading a story about a boy who uh, was saying, was looking up at the moon and saying, Daddy, is God in the moon? And the daddy said, well, yes. And then the boy said, is, is, is God in me? And, and the daddy said, yes, God's everywhere. And he said, is God in my tummy? And the dad was starting to wonder where this was going. And he said, yes. The boy thought for a second and said, God wants a banana. 
<laughs> so God is, God is everywhere, right? He's in us. He's in our tummy. He's, he's, uh, he's in the moon. He's, he, he, he is not everything, pantheism, but he is everywhere. Uh, but we are especially in the presence of God when we start to worship, when we start to sing and praise him. That is when it says scripture in the Psalms again says he is enthroned in the presence of enthroned on the praises of his people. When we worship God, that's where he reigns as king and as Lord. Worship is powerful. It brings us right into the tangible presence of God. I loved worship this morning. Can I get uh, a couple more kids? Anyone like to build with blocks? Oh, wow. Those hands went up right away. Okay, come on up. Come on up. Okay, here we go. So you guys are going to have to share here. There's a lot of volunteers. Okay. Oh, wow. That's more, more than I thought. Okay, so let's have you two, you boys, come on down here. And you start, uh, you start building on the, alt- on the pew here, or uh, the, uh, just the tower. Build it as tall as you can. And you four, come over here, and you start building um, here. And start building towers just as tall as you can. I want to see who can get the tallest. There we go. Here we go. (laughs) So there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, the city, the people. God is in the middle of us. Therefore, we will not be moved. We won't be moved. God will help us when the morning dawns. Um, That when the morning dawns, there's a consistent reference. I'm I'm excited. Going forward here, we're we're going to be doing a we're doing a parenting series. And then uh, coming up, we're going to be doing a series on um, spiritual warfare, is what I feel like the Lord has been putting on my heart. And then after that, uh, end times prophecy, end times prophecy. So just kind of give a feel for like what we're looking at. I try, I try to keep them balanced. So um, anyways, that's just what the, the Lord's been putting on my heart lately. So end times prophecy, bringing that up, there's a lot of end times prophecy that talks about um, that the, the world... The nations, the evil, the evil empires of this world are going to attack God's people and are going to attack Jerusalem. And a matter of fact, it's going to look so ugly that people are going to be convinced. Oh, people are going to be convinced that the enemy has won, that darkness has won, that the evil empire has won. And they're going to be convinced that it's all over for Jerusalem. It's all over for God's people. And then, like at the flash in an instant, the morning is going to come. Actually, the, one of the prophets says it will be evening, and then all of a sudden it will be morning. And morning is going to be like out of place. And the morning will come, and all of a sudden everyone will see the Lord's victory. They'll see Jesus Christ riding on the horse, and he brings the victory just out of nowhere. And so I, lo- I love this is just a shadow of that future victory of God. God is in the midst of her. The people of God shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. It's just this little glimpse of the end times here. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. All right, so did you guys, we got uh, 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. All right. Pause, pause, pause. Okay. Let's see. What did we build? Who built what here? What do we got going on? Who built, who built this thing? All of you cooperative. Look at that. The girls. <laughs> okay. And way to go, Nolan. And who built, is this part of this? Is this the same structure? Or? That was yours. Okay. All right. And who built this? Okay. Co- boys cooperative too. Great. Awesome. So we've got two towers. Uh, Let's see, right? Trying to measure it. Here, you know what we're going to do? We need, a, we need a measuring rod. Which, by the way, free sermon, the scripture is called a cannon because a cannon is actually the word for a measuring rod. And the scripture is the measuring rod in our life. The scripture tells us what measures up and what doesn't. It's the canon of scripture. Okay, so we're looking at the measuring rod right there. Okay, so there. Now let's look. Let's look. See how we're doing? Excuse me, excuse me. Oh my goodness, by about an inch and a half. <laughs> All right, 
Hold on, you guys all get candy. You all get candy. Put that piece back up, Levi. Gentle, gentle, careful. Don't knock it over. Don't knock it over. All right, go and grab candy. <laughs> all right, don't be shy. <laughs> he, Elijah got a candy already. Here you go. Uh, Nolan, I'm going to pick one out and give it to you. All right, here you go. There we go. Wait, does this have peanut butter? Uh, Milky Way, I don't think, has peanut butter. There you go. Dark chocolate, vanilla, and other stuff. All right. Oh, it's just, they're all the same size. If you, uh, <laughs> oh, a Twix. Okay, I can't, I can't fault the man for that. I do love Twix. Okay. So now listen again to the scripture here. Uh, God is in the midst of her, the people of God. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So what I want you to imagine is like, here we are, you know, and we're surrounded by the kingdoms of this world. And things are crazy, and things start moving sideways, and we start getting nervous, like, oh no, this is off balance, this isn't going to work very well, I don't, I don't know how long this can hold up before, and things are shaking, and they're wobbling, and like, things are off kilter, and we're, we're like freaking out, because the world is falling down around us. The world is coming apart all around us, and we're like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And, that, and that's the way it can feel sometimes. Like when there's, when there's wars and rumors of wars, when there's earthquakes, when there's hurricanes, when there's uh, mandates, when there's uh, division in politics, when there's contention, when there's riots in the streets, when there's things are on fire and are burning, it can feel like, holy smokes, like I'm getting nervous, like things are going to fall down. And meanwhile, in the middle of all of that, it's like we don't realize that we're part of another kingdom. We're part of the kingdom of God. And, and we don't have to worry when things go chaotic because this is not our world. This is not our home. This is not our reality. It, it, this is not our long-term existence. We, we're foreigners. Scripture says we're pilgrims. We're, we're passing through this place temporarily, but this place won't last very long, and pretty soon we're going to be, we're going to have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so what the Lord says is don't freak out when things start, when things start getting nervous and you start wondering like, oh no, what's going to happen? The world is shaking. Nations are falling. People are, they're mandating masks and I don't like to wear masks. I'm scared of getting sick and no one else is wearing a mask. I am mandating a vaccine and I don't want to get the vaccine. I'm scared of getting sick and not everybody else is getting the vaccine. What do I do? I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. God says this will not last. This is temporary. This is eternal. This, this is like a thing, a, 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 a dream in the night. And this is like the rest of your life. And God says, stop panicking. Because what's going to happen, according to Scripture, <laughs> what's going to happen, according to Scripture, he says, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. So God's like, he comes into the mix, and he speaks, and everything else, everything else falls down, but God's kingdom stands stronger than this, <laughs> right? So things start to shake. God utters his voice. It's crazy. And the earth falls down, but what's still standing is God's kingdom, and that's, that, Amen. And that's exactly what Hebrews chapter 12 says, is that since we are inheriting a kingdom that cannot be shaken, right? The Lord says that once more he'll utter his voice and, and, uh, um, and shake the earth. And that's going to be the last time the earth shakes because everything that can be broken is going to break. And what's going to remain is what cannot break. What will never break, the unshakable kingdom of God, the word of God, the truth of God. So we don't need to worry. 
it did break. Yeah, everything else will break. And, and you know what? That's kind of that's the truth. <laughs> it is the truth. Everything else, everything else will break. Everything else is going to fall apart. And the sooner that we recognize that and remember that, like, it helps have us have peace in the midst of it when we know, okay, yeah, this earth is shakable. This earth can be shaken, and that's okay because I have a truth living inside of me that will never be shaken, that cannot be shaken. Um, there we go. Woo. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he's brought desolation on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow. He shatters the spear. Kids, that means there will come a day where there will never be war again. People will never kill each other again. There will never be fighting again. Nation will never rise up against nation again. There will be peace on the earth forever. There will be life on the earth. There will be health on the earth. That day is coming. And we look forward to that day. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. And then verse 10, he says, Be still and know that I am God. Not me, him. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. See, whatever it looks like right now, however discouraging, however difficult, God will be exalted. God will be lifted up. God will be praised. God is going to turn whatever's happening in our life, and he's going to turn it for good. I, I, we get the Voice of the Martyrs magazine at our house each month, and, and I love reading through those stories because they're so encouraging. To read about this woman who um, had a disease, had sickness, had cysts in her body, could not be healed. Her husband died, and when her husband died, it was a, a Muslim nation, it was Egypt, um, her, her in-laws took everything and left her and her kids homeless, out on the street and sick. And in that condition, someone came to her and prayed for her and said, her doctor, her doctor knew Christ. And her doctor said, you need to pray. And she did. And she was healed. The cysts disappeared from her body. She could not be healed. And the cysts were gone. She was healed. And, amen. And she, she received the Lord and she started praying that the Lord would show revelation to her kids. And the Lord appeared, Jesus appeared to her kids. She had three teens. Um, the Lord appeared to her kids in dreams. And they all got saved as well. Um, and there was just a huge transformation in her life. This peace in her life. This joy in her life. But at the same time as she had the peace and joy, the unshakable kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Well, she had this new righteousness, peace, and joy that could not be shaken the world around her started to persecute her because she was living in Egypt. They started to take things away from her. She was, she had found an apartment. They took it away. They kicked her out. People beat up her son. They beat her up. But she had what could not be shaken and could not be removed. And eventually, Voice of the Martyrs came in and helped her relocate and, and provide for her. That's kind of what they do. Um, because we're called to remember those who are persecuted like we ourselves are persecuted. Even in her situation, she, the Lord was glorified in her life. Even in her sickness, I was just reading that and thinking about, she was a widow, she was a homeless, her kids were fatherless. And you know who's close to the heart of the Lord? The orphan, the widow, the stranger, the poor. And God was with her and rescued her and he took her situation and did something beautiful with it. And that's what he's going to do with the whole world. The whole world. God's going to take our world and he's going to do something beautiful with it. We can't see it. We can't understand it. Like Pastor Julie was saying last week, his ways are higher than our ways. And that's, and that's actually, then sec, this last psalm that we're going to look at, it's a very short one, Psalm 131. It's actually exactly what he's talking about here. What's this, kids? A baby. What do babies drink? No, that's right. So babies, right, you gotta, you gotta support the head, right? Babies, they drink milk, right? And they need milk. Do you know what else, what do babies do? 
So just a few things babies do. What's that? They cry. And there's a couple other things we could mention, but the one I was going for was crying. So babies drink milk and babies cry. Do babies cry a lot? Yes, they cry a lot. Oh my goodness, they cry a lot. Julie and I had a couple of them. And uh, they cry all night long. And the reason is because babies are drinking this milk and the milk can only keep them full for a few hours. And so, like, they need to drink, especially right in the very beginning, their tummies are so small, they need to drink, like, every three or four hours. That means that mommy or daddy with a bottle needs to feed them every three or four hours. But I like to sleep for, like, eight hours at night. <laughs> and so that's difficult when they want to get fed every three or four hours. And so eventually, hey, uh, Levi, do you only drink milk? No! What else do you do? You eat cereal. That's right. And the great thing about cereal is, depending on the brand, it's a complex carb. Complex carbs take a long time to break down in your stomach, and it keeps you full for a long time. And that's why when you start to introduce solid food to the babies, and you start to give them little spoonfuls of, like, blended asparagus and snot, and you, and you start feeding that to your kid, <laughs> shame on you, you start feeding that to your kid, well, that food takes longer to break down in their tummies, and they, still, they stay full longer, and they don't have to eat as often. And they can start going like three meals a day, like you and I. They can make it for three meals a day when they start having good, solid food, and their tummies get bigger. Sometimes their tummies get really big. Like, <laughs> I, I've been, I do this dieting rhythm, but I, we're not going to get into that right now. Okay, so if you would turn with me to Psalm 131, this is a song of ascents. This, that means a song of ascent. Uh, ascent means a climbing, climbing, going up. So this is a psalm that the Israelites would used to sing when they would climb, when they would climb up to Jerusalem. Because every year, three times each year, they were supposed to go to Jerusalem. And the thing about Jerusalem is it was way up high. It was higher than all the ground around it. And so they had to really, really literally climb up to Jerusalem. They would go up the path, and they'd be climbing up the hill, and they'd be getting higher and higher and higher, right? <laughs> they'd get higher and higher and higher. And as they would be ascending, as they would be climbing, they would sing these psalms uh, from Psalm 120 all the way to Psalm uh, 134. They would sing those 15 songs. And some, uh, even the priests, as they would go up the steps of the temple at times, would sing those songs as they came into the presence of the Lord. So as they came to God, as they came to worship God, as they came into the city of God, they came to, into God's temple, came into God's presence, they would sing these psalms. And this is one of those psalms they would sing. O oh Yahweh, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I, I do not occupy, occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. What does weaned mean? Off the milk. That's right. Weaned means the baby no longer needs to drink milk all the time. Now the baby can eat food. And so he's saying, I'm like a weaned baby. Um, o Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So as the people of Israel, these men, women, and children would climb up to worship God, they would say, I'm like a little weaned baby. That's a funny thing to say, right? Like, I, do you, did any of you say that today as you drove in and parked and walked through the doors? I'm like a little weaned baby. <laughs> Probably not too many of you declared that on your way through the doors. But what, what he's saying here, I have calmed and quieted my soul. That word for calm, it means to make level, to make smooth. So when, when we're tumultuous, storm-tossed, like waves in the ocean, up and down, up and down, he says, I've gone to my soul and I've calmed down and quieted my soul. I've quieted the noise around me so that I can worship the Lord because I'm like a weaned child with his mother. So if this baby has been weaned and isn't hungry every three hours, will it cry so much? No. But Ella, can I pick on you? When was the last time you cried for food? 
a long time ago, right? She, she's grown now. She's grown up. She, she's not on milk anymore. She doesn't have to cry when she's hungry because she, she uses her words, for one. And for two, she knows her parents are going to take care of her, right? Her parents are going to take care of her. They're going to make sure she has the food. Same deal. Elijah, much younger, but he doesn't have to uh, cry like a baby when he wants food. You guys know that cry, that mm sound? <laughs> Elijah doesn't have to do that anymore because he knows we're going to feed him. And he, he can take rest. Sometimes he whines still. We're getting past that. But he, he can just take rest and know mommy and daddy are going to take care of him. And if we're like a weaned child with its mother, that means we're like a little kid. We have peace and confidence. We know God's going to take care of us. Like when you're small, your mom and your dad, they're superheroes. Like, they can do anything. You know they're going to take care of you. And once you're weaned, you're not begging for food all the time. You know they're going to feed you. And so we come to God in that same way. It's not that we need God any less. We need God just as much as ever. But we've quieted our soul through faith. We've, let, we've told ourselves. We said, soul, listen up. This is the way it is. My God is faithful. He takes care of me. He's my refuge. And, and the first half of this psalm says, like a little kid, Lord, my heart's not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me. Lord, I, I'm not trying to figure out why this is happening to me. I'm not trying to figure out why I'm at this crossroads in my job with this vaccine. I'm not trying to figure out why inflation is killing my budget and making it hard to make the, the check last to the end of the month. God, I'm not trying to figure out why the world seems so chaotic and nations are... I, I'm leaving that to you. You're going to make something beautiful out of this. You're going to take this and make it good, and it's beyond me. Your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I have calmed myself down. I have made my soul level and smooth, peaceful and quiet because I'm like, I'm just held in your arms. When I come and worship you, I feel you holding me like a little child, and I'm not crying out. I'm just trusting you. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. Because this, this is all going to shake. This is all going to fall. But I know that you are going to last forever. And I'm just full of joy to see how you're going to work this out for good. I'm full of excitement and anticipation because this is passing like the night, but joy comes in the morning. Isn't that true? Sorrow may last for the night, but what happens? Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, before I close, I just uh, want to read this quick story to you. Uh, in a man, uh, so there's a book called A Man Called Peter, the, biog the biography of Senate chaplain Peter Marshall. His wife, Catherine Marshall, recounts a strange incident that happened to Peter early in his life. He was working in the English village of Bamber, 16 miles from the Scottish border. One dark and starless night, walking from a nearby village, Peter was making his way through the moorlands. He was having great trouble seeing the path, for the blackness was inky and eerie. Suddenly, he heard his name. Peter. The, there was urgency in the voice. Yes, Peter replied, stopping and listening. There was no reply, and so he resumed his walking. Suddenly, the voice came again, even more urgently. Peter! He stopped dead still, trying to peer into the impenetrable darkness. And he stumbled and fell to his knees. Putting out his hand to catch himself, he found nothing there. Well, I know the rest of the story. He had come to the in, edge of a, a stone quarry where they dig straight down, pulling out rock. And he was at the edge of a bluff. And had he taken one more step, he was at the edge of the cliff, he would have fell down and died. There was no one there. In the dark, no one could see. There was no flashlights. Just a voice calling out Peter, making him fall down and stopping him in his tracks before he went over the edge. Crazy, right? 
You know, I, I had a similar experience. I've shared it before. I was in Bible college. I had finished and was working at the college, living across the street. And late at night, I was going over to see what was happening in the dorms. And uh, as I was crossing the street in the crosswalk, I had the, had the light. I was about halfway through the road, and I felt like the Lord told me, um, not audibly, but in my heart, I felt this impression in my heart like I, I needed to go back and go back to my house. And I stopped for a second. I was like, but why? Why on earth would I do? There's no good reason why I would go back to my house. And, and I just felt this feeling again, like the Lord speaking to me, no, you need to turn around and go back. So I stopped, and I turned around, and I went back. And at that moment, down Covina, West Covina Boulevard, a car came racing down, swung right, and ran through the red light, hot rod burning rubber, went right through the red light, right over the crosswalk where I would have been walking. And it was just the Lord, he speaks to us, and it's, it's a good idea to listen. <laughs> and, and, and I share that story just to say, no matter how chaotic your life is, when you take the time to worship the Lord, to steady your soul, to be still, that means be still, in another translation, it literally says, stop striving. Cease striving and just know that he is God. And when you stop yourself and you know that he's God and he's on the throne, he's with you. He's walking with you. He's watching your steps. He's taking care of you on the path. And that's why you don't need to fear. Even if we were to face persecution like that beautiful woman in Egypt who gave her heart to the Lord, Jesus was walking with her. He cared about her. That's, her chi- that's his child. And when you stop yourself and calm yourself and like a, a weaned baby with his mother and you're still and know that he is God and you enter into his presence through worship and praise and you remember that the things of this world are passing away but his kingdom is forever. He will take care of you. It's like Isaiah 41.10. Don't be afraid for I am your God. I will be with you. I will deliver you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. So I don't know if that speaks to you or not. If if you're feeling like the world is chaotic or difficult, if you are, be still and know that he is God. Come back into his arms in worship. Let him be enthroned in your praise. And remember that which cannot be shaken lives inside of you. And God will take care of you, and he will order your steps. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this day and your presence in our life. We pray that you would help us to be like little children in our faith, in our trust of you. Help us to have that confidence, that peace, Lord. And I pray for a heart of worship in our church that we would love to worship you, to praise you. And that as we worship you each morning, looking forward to the morning when you come again, Lord, I pray that you would fill us with joy and peace and righteousness, just as you promised. Build your kingdom here in us. May we be people of peace with the preparation of the gospel of peace on our feet so that wherever we walk, Lord, we're claiming that territory for the kingdom of God, every place our so- the sole of our footsteps, and we'd be bringing peace into those situations. When the world is tumultuous, when things are crumbling, we would be people of peace because we have sought you in the morning. We have rested in you. We have worshiped you. We have quieted ourselves and remembered who is on the throne. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord, or maybe you've fallen away from him, you've rejected him, Jesus forgives. He forgives. He knew, and this is the beautiful thing about the cross, is that Jesus knew every mistake and sin you were ever going to make. Jesus knew your failure. Jesus knew your disobedience. He knew your rebelliousness. He knew the wickedness inside of you. And seeing every mistake you would ever do, He said, I want to die for that person anyways. I love you. I love you. Regardless of what you have done, are doing, or will do, I love you. And when we put our faith in Jesus, we're accepting that love. We are accepting 
the love of our Creator who laid Himself down for us. By His stripes, we are healed. He bore the punishment of our peace. When Jesus died on that cross, it was so you and I could be forgiven for every mistake we made. And when we accept His love and His forgiveness, we're declaring Him as our Lord. That He now orders our steps. He directs our path. When He speaks to our heart, we listen because we know He's a good Father and He has our best at heart. If you want to enter into that relationship with Jesus, would you just raise your hand right now and accept His love? Accept His love. It's a free gift He's offering to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And would you just all of you, just pray with me right now. If you want to accept that, Father, Father, be my dad. Forgive me for my mistakes and the rotten things I've done. Make me clean. I give myself to you and I accept your love. I pray for a new start today. The old is gone, the new has come in Jesus. I choose to walk in Jesus from today forever. In your name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, God, for that newness of life, that new gift, the joy, the grace, the forgiveness for a fresh start. Help us, Lord, to keep in step with the Spirit, to measure our lives by the canon, the ruler stick of the Word of God, and fill us with strength to be our refuge in the storm and our peace. In Jesus' name, amen.